Picking the right puppy to belong to is a mighty important decision. Yes, there's no other dog in the world like yours. No other dog food like kennel ration. America's favorite dog food. Dogs grow strong and healthy on kennel ration. It's so good and wholesome. Kennel ration is packed with lean red meat. It contains wholesome steaks, chops, and roasts of U.S. government inspected horse meat, plus other nutrients a dog is known to need. The kind of protein-rich food today's dogs require. <laughs> yes, there's no other dog in the world like yours. And no other dog food like kennel ration. Put your trust in kennel ration with lean red meat. More people do. Now, Quaker invites you to enjoy The Adventures of the Nelson Family. And the bill will be presented to the governor in three weeks. And now for a complete rundown on the local news. Did I tell you what happened to Mrs. Anderson? No, I don't think so. Well, the Women's Club is having a dinner next week. We don't know who the speaker's going to be yet. And she was selling these tickets. She sold two books before she found out they were for last year's dinner. Oh, <laughs> how about that? Oh, I bumped into Sally Darby today. She told me the Van Schuylers are getting a new car. Oh, really? Well, what kind? Well, I don't know, but the payments are $62 a month. Well, gee, that sounds like a good car. Oh, and poor little Bobby Wilson has the mumps. Oh, that's a shame. Mr. Wilson's moved into the Y. He's never had them. Oh, why didn't he have Doc Williams give him a shot? Oh, you know Eileen the check at the market? Yeah. Well, she was telling me that June Williams is going to have Doc's office completely refurnished. Oh, well, that's good news. He could stand it. I hope they get some new magazines in there. His nurse is getting married, you know. Oh, well, good for her. And that concludes today's local news. What did you do today? Me? Yeah, anything interesting happen? Oh, no, nothing interesting. Thought you were going to have lunch with Joe. Oh, yeah, I did, but that wasn't very interesting. I mean, it's not unusual. Uh, I have lunch with him all the time. What'd you talk about? <laughs> what is this, a third degree? No, I'm just interested in what you did all day. Don't you want to tell me? Well, sure, but I don't remember every little thing I do. Well, you don't try. Hey, wait a second. I just remembered something. I won the golf tournament at the club. That was last Saturday. Well, I, 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 I think I told you. Eileen told me. You mean the, the, the checker at the market? That's right. Darby told Sally. Sally told her, and she congratulated me. Well, I, I'm sure I told you about it. Oh, you did. You told me you won, but Eileen told me the details. You were in the rough on the 6th, 12th, and 14th holes. You four-putted five greens, but you won because you had such a good handicap. I'd have to tell you anything. You have more news sources than the Associated Press. Well, that's not the point. I like to hear what happens straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Nothing oh. personal, dear. Oh. <laughs> well, come on. What did you do today? Well, it was nothing important. I, I had lunch with Joe, and we talked about golf. Now, 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 wait a second. There was something. Oh, yeah, he and Clara are coming over to play bridge. When? Oh, what about uh, 45 minutes? 45 minutes? We haven't even had dinner yet. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I was too busy listening to the news. <laughs> Would you like to play me a game of gin rummy while we're waiting on? <laughs> well, I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> you just did. Well, I don't see any trophies for bridge playing on our mantelpiece. It's not for bridge, that's for golf. Well, I don't see any of those on our mantelpiece either. And I could have won one if I'd had a phony handicap like Oz's. You're talking about phony handicap. Well, you know darn well that's the only reason you won the tournament. Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. Are we arguing about golf or bridge? Oh. Well, I don't want to play bridge anymore anyway. What do you want to do? Well, let's just sit around and talk. That's okay with me. Did you hear about Millie Benson? No, what about her? She's going to have a baby. Really? Oh, yeah. Didn't Ozzie tell you? No. Well, that's funny. Joe said Ed Benson came by his table today when he was having lunch with Ozzie. That is, Joe was having lunch with Ozzie when Ed came over. Oh. Joe said they bought a new house. Really? They need more room. Well, I guess they do if they're expecting a baby. Well, that's not why they need more room. Millie's mother's moving in with them. Oh. Hey, it sure was a surprise to see George Young, eh, Oz? Oh, uh, yeah. How long has it been since you've seen him? Oh, a couple of years. Did you have lunch with him? No, I just happened to be there. 
He's put on a little weight. About 20 pounds, I'd say. Well, uh, yeah, at, uh, at least 20 pounds. Say, what do you think about their raising the prices? What's this? At the club. Didn't Ozzy tell you? No. They're raising the price of the businessman's lunch to a dollar seventy-five. From a dollar sixty-five. <laughs> well, I think it's off. Joe, I think you ought to take your lunch with you from now on. Well, isn't it worth ten cents more to have me eat in a place where I get all this news? <laughs> Same price as a newspaper. But, uh, say, uh, would you like a Coke, Clara? Oh, that sounds good. Uh, Harriet? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, come on, uh, give me a hand, will you, Joe? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, that Ozzy thinks of everything. Sometimes. <laughs> Are you a troublemaker? What's the matter? Well, why do you have to go home and blab everything you know? What's this? A and a lot of stuff you don't know. Now, that wasn't George Young we saw at lunch today. Well, it looked like him. No, it didn't. It did, too, if George had gained 20 pounds. <laughs> why do you have to make up all that stuff? Well, I thought it was George Young. Besides, Clara likes to hear about things like this when I come home. All women do. Doesn't Harriet? Well, I don't know. I, I always forget. Do what I do. If you can't remember, make up a few things. <laughs> How do I do that? It makes the day a little more interesting. Well, my day is interesting enough. I don't mean for you. I mean for Harriet. What did you tell her when you got home today? Well, I told her I took the bus downtown, had lunch with you, and came home. Isn't that pretty dull? Oh, all except having lunch with me. Uh, come to think of it, that was pretty dull, too. <laughs> not. At least not the way I told it to Clara. Well, she, you made up a bunch of stuff that never happened at all. I did not. I enlarged on a few things, perhaps. For instance, what did you do this morning? Well, I walked down to the bus stop and waited for the bus. And what happened? Well, the bus came along, I got on and rode downtown. The fellow didn't come up to you and ask you directions so that you missed the bus? Well, no, of course not. <laughs> All right, you can lead a dull life if you want to. Well, that isn't the point. I just don't like phoning things up. Well, you don't seem to mind phoning up your golf handicap so you can win a tournament. <laughs> I don't have a phony golf handicap. That's not what Eileen said. Well, who, who's I? You mean the, the checker at the market? No, Eileen, the wife of the caddy that went around with you. <laughs> what does she know about? She wasn't even there. Oz, there are some men who like to go home and tell their wives about the interesting things that happen during the day. Well, I told Harriet about the tournament. I, I even brought the clipping home from the paper. It's right up on the board there. Oh? I don't think I saw that. Yeah, it's uh, from the club news. Who's standing next to you? Well, that, that's the club president. You know him. Ah, I mean the woman. Well, I don't know. I, I never saw her before. Did you tell Harriet about her? Why should I tell Harriet about her? I don't even know her. You don't have to know her. Isn't it enough that she wanted your autograph? That she wanted to take golf lessons from you? <laughs> well, you are a troublemaker, aren't you? I'm only trying to patch things up between you and Harriet. There's... There's nothing to patch up between Harriet and me. There will be if you insist on keeping these things from her. Well, do you fellas mind if we join the party? Oh, oh dear, glad to have you. Thought we got a couple of coats. Oh, well, there are plenty in the refrigerator. Just help yourself. <laughs> well, at least you could have told me you had lunch with George Young. Uh, I didn't have lunch with him, and it wasn't George Young. It was some guy who looked like him. Well, that's interesting. Why don't you tell me that? Well, I didn't think it was important. I tell you what, the next time I see a guy who looks like George Young, I'll tell you about it. Well, you don't have to get mad about it. Well, I'm not getting mad about it. But it just seems silly to come home and make up a bunch of stories about things that didn't happen. You mean all those things Joe told Clara didn't happen? Well, uh, they happened, but they didn't happen to happen the way Joe happened to tell them. But you see, uh, he exaggerates a little to make Clara happy. Well, I think that's very thoughtful of him. Well, okay. Starting tomorrow, I'll do my best to remember everything that happens. Besides which, I'll be trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, 50 brave, clean, and reverend. That's all I ask. Well, that's enough. Well, you know, it's kind of late. Excuse me, would you tell me where I get the Forest Avenue bus? Oh, yes, you're going in the wrong direction. It's uh, right down there at the corner. Thank you. I'm a stranger in town. It's okay. Uh, 525 directed man to Forest Avenue bus <laughs> a stranger in town
Well, hi, Oz. Oh, hi there. Hi, Mr. Nelson. Hi, Jack. Uh, uh, who was that fellow that just said hello to me? That was Dave Bender. Oh, yeah, Dave. I didn't recognize him. Well, he's put on a little weight. Oh, uh, about how much would you say? Oh, I don't know. About, uh, ten pounds, I guess. Ten pounds. Or maybe fifteen. Or, uh, fifteen. Just make me a few notes here. Oh. What do you have? Now, let's see. How about a pistachio frappe? Very good. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll have one. Okay, one pistachio frappe coming up. Pistachio. Psst. Uh, Jack? Uh, maybe you'd better make that a dish of vanilla ice cream. If I can't spell it, I don't deserve to have it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Same thing. Met Joe Randolph. What are you doing there? Just writing a few things down. Met Dave Bender in mall shop. Didn't recognize him. He'd gained 10 or 15 pounds. What's this? Uh, I, I'm making notes of everything that happens during the day so I can tell Harriet about it when I get home. You're doing what? Well, it, it, it's just a little gag, a, a joke. You, you know what a wonderful sense of humor Harriet has? Just kidding her. You mean she's going to think this is funny? Well, yes. You know how she always says, I never tell her what happens during the day? Well, I, I'm... Yeah, I'll show you what I mean. Here. Left house at 8.30. Uh, walked to bus stop. Sat behind a tall man reading a newspaper. What's the matter? Nothing. Go on. Uh, went into the drugstore. Uh, bought a tube of toothpaste. Large tube or small tube? A large tube. Why don't you write that down? A large tube of toothpaste. <laughs> Sounds pretty funny when you say it fast. <laughs> You're missing the whole point of this. I'm not striving for gags, per se. This is situation comedy. Don't you see the humor of this? Harriet says, I never tell her anything that happens during the day. So I'm going to write down every little inconsequential thing that happens. I I I'm sorry if you don't see the humor of this, but it happens to be very funny. That's not the point. The point is, will Harriet think it's funny? Of course she will. She, she knows I'm kidding. Well, it sounds sarcastic to me. It doesn't sound like you're kidding at all. Well, in, in the first place, this is all your fault. You and those phony stories you tell Clara every night. Okay, I admit it. I make up a few stories just to keep Clara happy. The only things I'm going to write down here are things that actually happen. Now, I, I'm not going to add to them. I'm not going to exaggerate. I'm going to write them down just as they happen. And if something doesn't happen, then I won't write it down. Keep the change, Jack. Well, thank you, Mr. Harvey. Know who that was? Who? William H. Harvey. Just finished writing a book on antiques. Make a big note of that, Oz. What? No wonder you have nothing to tell Harriet when you get home. You don't recognize something interesting when you see it. What are you talking about? You know what I'm going to tell Clara? I had a dish of ice cream with a famous author who just finished a book on antiques. Uh, what's his name again? William Harvey. That's right, my old friend Bill Harvey. You're not going to tell that to Clara. Who says I'm not? We got a dime, I'm even phoner. On second thought, I'm going to give this piece of news to you exclusively. Well, thanks a lot, but you don't think I'd tell Harry a phony story like that, do you? Well, what's phony about it? You were having a dish of ice cream, he was having a dish of ice cream, so you were having a dish of ice cream together. See how simple it is? A little too simple, if you ask me. You mean you're not going to try it? Well, of course not. Okay. Here you are, Jack. Oh, thank you. So long, Jack. So long. So long. Hello, honey. Guess who just dropped by to see me? William H. Harvey, the famous author. <laughs> Yes, again. Oh, hi, dear. Hi. 
kind of dressed up. Are we going out tonight? Well, I am. I've got that committee meeting at the women's club. Oh, you mean for the dinner next week? Yeah, that's right. You're going to have to get your own tonight. Well, that's okay. I had some ice cream at the malt shop. Well, the lamb chops are in the oven here. All you have to do is turn the broiler on. The stewed tomatoes are all cooked. Gee, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. There was no trouble. All I had to do was open a can. You know where Clara is? It's getting late. Uh, Harriet? Yeah? Uh, aren't you going to ask me what I did today? Will it do any good? Well, uh, try me. <laughs> all right. What'd you do today? Uh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, uh, I kept a kind of a running account of everything I did. Well, wonderful. Let's hear it. Well, it's, uh... Oh, it's, it's, uh, sort of a, a gag. Like, you know, it's, it's stuff like, uh, I got on the bus and, and uh, I, I, I met this man and, uh... It, it all adds up to uh, sort of a dull day. Uh, why don't you take it with you and you can read it when you get a chance. No, it's all right, dear. I'll take your word for it. Oh, there's Clara. I won't be late. Good night. Good night. Come on in, Clara. Oh, Harry, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to fix Joe's dinner. Ozzy's going to fix his own. Well, no wonder. Look at all the famous people he knows. <laughs> Look at that. You're going to have to explain that one to me. You mean Ozzy didn't tell you he had ice cream at the malt shop with William Harvey? Who's William Harvey? One of our most famous authors and one of Ozzy's best friends. Who told you that? Joe. When he came home tonight, that's the first thing he told me. Ozzy had a dish of ice cream with William Harvey. Well, it was the first I've heard about it. You mean Ozzy didn't even mention it? No, in fact, he's never mentioned anybody by that name. Well, he's so modest. Well, that's one way of looking at it. So when the mayor said he couldn't attend our dinner, we asked Judge Baldwin. But unfortunately, he's going to be out of town next weekend. So, uh, in a sense, this is an emergency meeting. We've just got to find somebody to be a guest speaker. Well, may I say something? I don't mean at the dinner. I mean now. Oh, certainly, Clara. I think I know who we can get. How would you all like to have a famous author for our speaker? Oh, oh. He happens to be one of the best friends of my husband's best friend. Who's that? Ozzy Nelson. <laughs> Has Ozzy written the book? Well, no, not that I know of. No, I mean this author is one of Ozzy's best friends. Oh, well, what's his name? William Harvey. William Harvey? Well, I'm sorry, Claire. I don't believe I've ever heard of him. Well, from what I understand, he's one of the outstanding authorities on antiques. I know he's written a book. I read a review on it. Oh, my goodness, Harriet. Do you think we could get him as a speaker? Well, I don't know. Maybe Ozzy'd invite him for us. Oh, I think that might be imposing on Ozzy. Why don't we ask Mr. Harvey ourselves? That's a good idea, and we could use Ozzy's name. That'd be all right, wouldn't it, Harriet? Well, sure, I imagine so. Oh, that's wonderful. We could find out where he lives and then go over there right after the meeting. All those in favor of inviting the famous author, John Harvey... Uh, uh, William Harvey. <laughs> I'm sorry. All those in favor of inviting the famous author, William Harvey, to be our speaker... And using Ozzy's name. Oh, yes. Say I. Ozzy. I. You didn't say anything to Harriet about meeting him? Well, no, of course not. Why not? Well, for one thing, I couldn't remember his name. William Harvey, that's simple. Well, even if I had remembered his name, what could I tell her? Actually, I didn't even meet the man. Look, Oz, you were in the mall shop, weren't you? You were sitting at the same counter with him. You were having ice cream with him. And why am I helping you with these dishes? <laughs> because you just had two pieces of apple pie and a cup of coffee. But nevertheless, I still can't understand why you didn't tell Harriet. Well, because there was nothing to tell her. What do you mean there was nothing to tell her? It took me a half hour just to describe how Jack scooped the ice cream into the dish. <laughs> well, maybe it was ten minutes. All I know is Clara was fascinated. What's this? Uh, the broiling pan. Uh, don't put that in there. Dry it off with this dish towel. No, look, I'm not going to dry this. I didn't have any lamb chops. Well, okay. <laughs> I thought it'd make a pretty good story by the time you got through exaggerating it for Clara's benefit. Are you kidding? If Clara knew I helped you with the dishes, I'd be stuck with them every night. Oh, hi, fellas. Oh, oh, oh Harriet, right. where's dear. Clara? Well, she went on home. We didn't know you were here. Oh, well, I'd better get on home, too. I'll see you, Oz. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Harriet. Good night, Joe. Well, you're home early. Yes, thanks to you. Me? Yes, you got us our guest speaker. I, I did? William Harvey, why didn't you tell me you had ice cream with him at the malt shop today? Harriet, I, I don't even know the man. Uh, did Clara tell you this? 
Well, yes, and from the way Joe told it to her, I thought he was an old friend of yours. Well, that's not a darn Joe. He exaggerates everything. Well, Clara was convinced, and so was I. Well, if I had met him, don't you think I would have told you about it? I'm not so sure. <laughs> Let's get this understood. If I don't tell you about anything, it's because nothing's happened. Well, I have some interesting news for you. The committee's going to ask Mr. Harvey to be our guest speaker, and they're using your name as an introduction. It won't get him past the front door. The man doesn't know me. This is terribly embarrassing. Uh, when are they going over there? Well, I imagine they're there right now. They were leaving from the women's club. Well, it's obviously too late. I wonder what happened. Well, they probably went over to his house and mentioned my name. He gave them a blank stare. Everybody got terribly embarrassed, and they're on their way home. Well, what are we going to do? Well, I don't think we ought to do anything. It's Joe's fault. It's up to him to straighten the whole thing out. Don't get excited. Excited? Who's excited? Don't you think your sweater would look better on you? Oh. <laughs> and the whole thing is your fault. You and your exaggerated stories. Will you keep your voice down, Oz? Clara might hear you. Well, I ought to tell Clara. Oh, you wouldn't do that, would you, Oz? Embarrass me like that? What, you embarrassed me in front of the whole women's club? You know why I told Clara. I was just trying to make the day sound a little more interesting. Well, then why didn't you tell her you knew Harvey? Because that wouldn't be true. I don't know him. Well, I don't know him either. I didn't say you did. All I said was you were sitting at the counter. Oh, you let's were... not start that again. What do you want me to do? Get your coat. I'm taking you for a little ride. You mean you're going to rub me out? <laughs> That's a possibility. Come on, get your coat. What's Harriet going to say about this? She's driving the car. <laughs> well, okay, Benedict Arnold, ring the bell. This is so embarrassing. Well, it'd have been a lot more embarrassing if we had Clara along. Now, ring the bell. Okay, don't rush me. I'm just trying to work up enough nerve. Well, what'd you do that for? <laughs> When Mr. Harvey answers the door, I want you to tell him the truth. The plain, unadulterated truth. I admit I don't know the man. I never met him in my life. Oh, well, Ozzie Nelson, what a wonderful surprise. Oh. <laughs> uh, won't you come in? Oh, so this is my wife, uh, Mr. Uh, Harvey. This is uh, Benedict uh, 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 Joe Randolph. Mr. Harvey. Oh, Barbara. Yes, dear? There's somebody here I know you'll want to meet. Why don't you please go ahead? Oh, thank you. For goodness sakes, what a pleasant surprise. Hey, this is Mrs. Nelson. How do you do? Hello. Mr. Randolph. How do you do? And of course, my good friend, Ozzy. Oh. <laughs> How do you do? Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Thank oh. you. My, this is such a pleasure. Bill said he knew you, but I thought he was just kidding me. <laughs> you see, my wife is just beginning to take up golf. And she saw you win the tournament last week at the club. Oh, sure. Uh, that's where I know you from. We had our picture taken together. That's right. Did you see the tournament, Mrs. Nelson? No, I'm sorry. I missed it. Oh, oh well, your husband was absolutely fabulous. I love those low shots of yours that bounce along the ground. <laughs> yes, well, I take kind of a, a short backswing and I sort of uh, punch the ball. I, I put a lot of right hand into my shots. Oh, and that one shot of yours was simply fantastic. I think it was on the 15th, remember? You hit your balls against that big oak tree and bounced it out to the green. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's one of his favorite shots. Oh. Can I offer you some coffee or Coke or something? Oh, no, thank you. We really can't stay. We just stopped by to talk to your husband about the woman's club dinner. Oh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Peabody was just here. I told her I'd be delighted to be your speaker. Oh, that's very nice of you. Oh, not at all. Anything for my old friend, Ozzy. Oh, well, thank you. Would you come over, too, and be our guest for the evening? Oh, thank you. I'd love to. It sounds like fun. I, uh... I hope you didn't mind my pretending we were old friends. Oh, well, no. And in fact, I was very flattered by it. You see, my wife always claims that I never tell her anything. So this evening when I got home and she asked me if I'd done anything interesting, well, I couldn't resist saying I'd had a dish of ice cream with you at the malt shop. <laughs> I figured it must have been something like that. I recognize you from your picture in the paper. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you again, Mr. Harvey, and we'll look forward to seeing you at the dinner. The pleasure's all mine. Good, good night. night. It's nice to have met you. That is, I've, I've, uh, it's nice to have met you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Benedict. Arnold. I thought you said you didn't know him. Uh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'll explain it to you later. You see, you were mad at me, and everything worked out beautifully. You just threw no fault of yours. Oh, come on, Oz. Say you forgive me. <laughs> okay, I forgive you. And you're not going to take me for a ride? I won't take you for a ride. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Oz. You can walk home. Hey, get me <laughs>
Next week, the Nelson family will be brought to you by Eastman Kodak Company. And now, here's Ozzy. Tonight, I'd like to show you a new idea in picture taking. A fine 35 millimeter camera by Kodak called the Automatic 35. It lets you take beautiful color slides and get the right exposure time after time automatically. Just as your own eyes adjust to changing light, the Kodak Automatic 35 camera with its electric eye meter measures the light and adjusts itself automatically. It has a fine, fast lens. It takes superb color slides wherever you may be, and it's as easy to use as a snapshot camera. Now pictures you once might have missed come out fine, automatically. I'd suggest you see it this week at your Kodak dealers. The Kodak Automatic 35 camera costs $89.50 or as little as $9 down. It's the newest idea in 35 millimeter photography by Kodak. Things have been brought to you tonight by the Quaker Oats Company. Quaker, producers of more than 50 foods for the family. Next time you shop, try one of the many fine products of the Quaker Oats Company. More than one ball player has been so sure he's good that he starts missing easy catches. It's like that with driving a car. The National Safety Council says a really good driver never takes anything for granted. He expects the unexpected and is prepared to react fast. Quick thinking in a pinch is a lifesaver. So don't take a thing for granted when you're at the wheel. Overconfidence can dull the sharpest reflexes. Many of the 37,000 people killed on our highways last year might still be alive if good drivers never relied on chance. Drive as though your life depended on it. It does, and so do the lives of others. Live up to the rules. Drive carefully and courteously, too. Watch for warning signs. Obey posted speed limits. For your own protection, insist on strict law enforcement. When traffic laws are obeyed, deaths go down. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.